Um, good. Okay, so there are different factors, right? Let's just jump into it. So when there are different factors when you look at products on Amazon, which is, can be confusing. You hear stuff like, you need a product between $15 and $60. You need uh, the products to have less than 300 reviews or less than 800 reviews, and you need the product to weight less than one pound, and then you need uh, to look at the top three uh, products on the first page with the best BSR, and then maybe look for products below 1,000 BSR, below 5,000, and so on and so on, right? Is this confusing? Yeah, yeah? okay, good. Um, so I'm gonna show you a screenshot. Okay, this is a screenshot from Jungle Scout. I want you to take 10 seconds to think with yourself, I'm gonna show another example after this. Think with yourself if this is a good product or a bad product to go after, okay? Don't say anything yet, just look at the screenshot if you can, if you have the screens close to you. Um, I'll just go over it a bit, okay, so you can maybe see what it is. I arranged everything by BSR, okay? So you can see uh, it's arranged by BSR. You can see the price on the left, it's around $20 item. Um, you can see the number of reviews. Uh, reviews, they have like 800, 100, 200, 200. Um, and the revenues are like 41K, 39K, 40K, and so on and so on. Okay, who here thinks this is a good product to go after? Why? Indy, can you explain? The revenue is good. Um, okay, the revenue is good. Yeah. And um, <coughs> uh, the reviews aren't in the thousands. Mind you, the reviews are a bit high, but uh, the competitive. The reviews are not that high, you're saying, right? Okay. Anything else? Um, FBA. FBA, yeah, all of them are FBA, right? Yeah. Almost, yeah. Um, the sellers want sellers. Want yeah, okay. Yeah, so you would go after this product, you think, maybe? I would research it. You would research it. How would you research it other than just looking at this? That's the hard part, right? That's fine, that's fine. Um, anyone doesn't, doesn't think this is a good, no? Okay, yeah, why? The thing is, before I analyze this, yeah. I need to understand who's selling what. I, uh, it's very similar products, all of them are very similar products. So is it one brand, is it brand? No, it's different brands. All of them are different brands. All of them are FBA private label. All of them are different. All, all different brands. All different brands. Yeah. It's, it's not brand central. Not brand central. No. Okay. Yeah. The rag. So basically, you'd need to research what that rag meant for that category. What? Sorry. The ranking. The ranking for this. This is the baby category. Okay. This is pretty good sales. I think like six hundred in baby is around maybe um, maybe a hundred a day these days. Something like that. Uh, but you can see the revenue. Who cares about the BSR, I think? We're going to talk about that today, actually. Um, anyone else? Anyone doesn't think this is good? And can explain? Yeah, you can explain why? If it's Jungle Scout, it's just a snapshot of one like moment. Okay. And it doesn't show how it jumps up or down during the okay. whatever the time was, uh, it was selling. But let's say this is for the last 90 days. Let's say average. Well, I think competition is too big, reviews, too many reviews. And if it's a baby category, so it's even worse. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, the 90 days is nothing. What's that? The 90 days is nothing. The 90 days, what do you mean? The combined revenue for 90 days for all those products. No, I mean average, this is monthly, average, let's say 90 days. Let's say that's the average monthly sales of the last three months. Okay, let's say just for the sake of this example, yeah. I think it's a good product, but I would be, be, be very fearful to go into Why? Can you explain why or? Yeah, I mean, uh, because uh, I think a lot of people would want to sell the same product. Okay. So if you hear that a lot of people will want to sell the same product, okay, that's the fear, okay? Yeah, well, last one? Yeah? I would choose it just because of the, the price point. Price point is like 20 bucks, that's too low for you? It doesn't really give you much uh, anywhere to go. What time you put your cost of goods and your promotion? Okay, but maybe it's $1, Cogs, I don't know. I didn't check yet, but... I mean, before what you said right now, the next step of this will be to check suppliers. The question is, do you move forward to check suppliers or you stop right here? That's the question. Of course you need to check the price, but that's true for every product that you choose to move forward with. 
My question is, do you move forward to even research suppliers? That's the question, yeah. Um, I'd probably go for it because there were guys with less than 50 reviews doing 10 grand a month. Yeah, less than 50 reviews doing 10 grand a month. Yeah, that's a good, yeah. Just enter the market yeah. without any experience with the product. Yeah, but maybe they are doing a lot of giveaways right now and we need to check, right? We need to check and everything, but yeah, good point. Okay, all good points. Yeah, I just want to keep going. Okay, sorry guys. Um, all good points. This is the product. Okay? All of you who are in the baby niche knows this is a very saturated product right now. One thing I do want to point out that no one mentioned is the review rating. Okay, just as one example, everyone has five stars or 4.5 stars, so it's going to be very hard to actually improve something uh, in this specific case. Okay? Um, I wouldn't go for this product and for hopefully by the end of this lecture, remember, what is your name? Sorry, your name? Adam. Adam? Okay, so remember what Adam said, okay? He sees like low number of reviews doing over 10K a month. I'm going to mention that. You understand why I wouldn't go for this product, okay? Um, okay, good. One more example, okay? One more example quickly. Let's do it quickly, okay? So again, it's arranged by uh, rank. Uh, you can see rank 8 and you can see 20, 50, 80, 84, and so on. You can see revenues like over a million here and you can see a lot of reviews um, and so on and so on. Okay, um, healthier price points, I would say. Okay, higher price points. <clears throat> okay, who thinks he will go for this product? Who doesn't think he will go to this product? Okay, yeah, no one raises their hand because this is not enough data for you, right? Jungle Scott is not enough data, but a lot of people trust this data and they don't really know if they should move forward or not. Okay, why would you go after this? Just yeah, you said you would, right? Yeah, I said I would because I can see uh, people making good money with uh, uh, low reviews. So, yeah. And then also there's a, ra a low rating. Many of them, they're low rating. So you can improve. Because yeah, low rating, rating, you can improve. You can break it through because yeah. many have few reviews, so they break it through to the first page. Yeah. And I think they can make good, good revenue. Okay, good. So this is the product we are actually going to launch in a few months. It's this product. Okay, and hopefully again, by the end of this lecture, you will understand why. Okay, this is a baby monitor. Uh, the one on the left is the one that has 25,000 reviews on Amazon right now. Okay? Okay, good. So everyone is excited. Um, okay, so these factors are a problem. Okay? Because if we can't all agree that these are good factors to go with, then they don't really work. I mean, we need something better than this and a bit more clear. Right? So that's what I'm going to try and show you and hopefully you understand the methodology and everything. So we have a few different stages for this, okay? We have two different stages um, and these are my factors, okay? I call them, uh, first of all, you need two products, two products that have uh, 100, 100 um, and 2,000, okay? You're going to understand what that means in a second. So two products that have 100, 100 and 2,000. Any guesses what the first 100 is? Sales, reviews. Okay, good. Um, first argument is reviews. I want to see those two products have less than 100 reviews. Okay? This is the first thing I want to see, and I don't care about the first page. Okay? That's my next point. I don't care about the first page. I can extract five more pages with Jungle Scott or whatever. I want to look at all the pages. I'm, I'm looking right now at two products with less than 100 reviews. Okay, that's what I'm trying to find. Two products, less than 100 reviews. Next, the next 100, I remind you 100, 100, 2000. The next 100, any guesses? Days. Days, good. Yeah, he saw this before. It's okay. Um, 100 days. So, I wanna make sure the same two products are live on Amazon for at least 100 days. This is connected to what Adam mentioned before because I want to make sure that if those sellers are, have less than 100 reviews, I want to make sure they are over three months because that means they are over their launch phase. They probably finished it. I'm going to check in Kipa. If you don't know Kipa, you should. It's a free extension. I'm going to check in Kipa that the BSR is steady. I don't want to see any bumps in BSR recently or anything. I want to make sure it's a pretty steady line over the last 100 days. So all I look at Kipa right now is the number of days on the bottom right. 
I want to see that it's over 100 days on Amazon, okay? Last is the 2000. 2000, guesses? Revenue a month. Revenue a month, perfect. $2,000 revenue per month. So this is, this is all I look at, okay? The revenue of those two products make only $2,000 in sale a month, okay? Why do I want this? If you think about this, this is the first stage, okay? I want to find two products, less than 100 reviews, over 100 days, over 2,000 in revenue. Because if you think about it, this means that I can get this product live, get some reviews for the product, and then have organic sales immediately, right? You understand why? Yeah, and it doesn't matter how big the market is. It can be five pages long, it doesn't matter. As long as I find those products, that means I can still go in and get those organic sales going. Okay? Yeah? So far? Yeah? What? Sorry. How will you generate organic sales? Yeah, so, okay, so let's say on the first page I find four, or it doesn't matter which page, I find four, four sellers that have less than 100 reviews over 100 days and are making 2,000 in revenue. That means that if I'm going to get some reviews, let's say they have 20, let's say I get 20 reviews, then I will start selling organically like they are. You understand why? Because the market is big enough for me to step in as well, get that minimum number of reviews that I need in order to start selling. Okay. But if that same product has a lot of sellers who are Even if it has a lot of sellers, it's still big enough that I can, if I can't find those sellers, that means it's saturated. That means it's too competitive and I can't go in the market. Okay? Clear? Questions on this? Yeah. $2,000 a month. Is that the 10 seller? The Doesn't matter. 500 seller. I don't care. As long as they exist, the market is deep enough for me to go into. Yeah, because if I look at only the biggest reviews, biggest revenue, biggest everything, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't, because if I see those lower level guys, that I'm going to be there, right? When I launch, I'm going to be at the lower level. I'm going to be at the highest level. I want to see that I can rank the product quickly and I can get some organic sales going. That's what I want to see. I don't want to try and get 200 reviews or whatever reviews before I start selling organically. I want to see that I can sell immediately when I launch. Okay? This is clear? Last question. Yeah, on the back. Sorry. Only my local market. Yeah, you only want to look at your local market. You don't want to look elsewhere because it's not relevant. You want to look at the market you're going to sell in. Okay? So, yeah, I just mentioned uh, the answer to this. Okay. So, um, so, we can go launch your product, get some reviews, and already start selling organically quickly. Okay? It doesn't matter how many big sales there are. The important thing is there is room to go into the market. Stage two. So again, we found two products so far. And I don't know about you, I'm not in this business to make $2,000 in revenue a month. <laughs> okay? Um, so I want additional two products, except for the two that I found so far. I want additional two products, 100, 350, and 10,000. Okay? So, um, I want two more products that are also over 100 days on Amazon, have less than 350 reviews, and they're doing over 10K a month in revenue. Because if I can find this, this means I can go into the market easily, get some organic sales going, and I 350 reviews, you can use any number you want. You can put 300 or 200 or whatever. But 350 doesn't scare me that much. I think I can get to that at some point. Maybe it will take a few months, maybe a year or whatever. But I can reach that point and reach that 10K a month with this product. So I can launch it quickly, not a lot of effort, and scale it up to 10K a month. Is that clear? Yeah, okay. So I have no idea the level of the room. How many here are doing less than a million a year? Nice, okay. So this is what I believe you should all be focusing on right now. 
Because if you go after bigger fish, <laughs> you're probably gonna drown, I guess. Um, because this, I mean, this is very low hanging fruit. It shouldn't be that difficult to get these products doing five, eight, ten k a month. Okay, this is all you should be focusing on if you're doing less than a million a year. So yeah, after we launch the product, we still have room to grow and reach 10k a month without needing too many reviews to get there or a thousand reviews or whatever. Um, okay, so these are the two stages. Okay. So you do this when you just open Jungle Scout and whatever, and you look for those four products total. Okay? You look for the two in the stage one and the two in the stage two. Um, okay. So yeah, this is uh, recommended for sales doing uh, less than 100K or 80K a month, uh, less than a million a year, I would say. Yeah, okay. So there is a third stage. The third stage is for the bigger sellers, okay? And this is what I'm aiming for in every product that I launch these days. So stage three is two additional products, over 100 days, less than 1,000 reviews, and over 50K in revenue, okay? So uh, for sales doing over 100K a month, you don't need stage one anymore. You only need stages two and three. Because you already know how to, you don't need stage one. You can just start stage two, and this is why confident, I'm confident I can launch a baby monitor, okay? And I can skip over um, stage one pretty much. But stage two uh, is get to 10K quickly with an aggressive launch, and hopefully you have an audience, Facebook, ManyChat, Instagram, whatever. Uh, you have room to grow to 50K a month, okay? This is a very healthy market, it's competitive probably and everything. But you can grow to much bigger numbers. So yeah, so these are the numbers for sellers doing over 100k a month. Okay. Um, okay. So didn't I forget something, guys? In these criteria that you see here, these are all of my criteria. I don't look at anything else. Did I forget anything at all? Anyone doesn't agree with this? You guys, you don't agree? No, you, we're talking between you. I'm talking, yeah. Never mind, okay. I yeah. I, I mean, this is assuming that you have no interest in the product you're selling. You're just going for anything based on numbers. No, so I'm going to mention that, but you should have an interest to build a brand. <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah, but I look for products in my brand that fit these criteria. Okay. I do build a brand. I don't look at all the products on Amazon. Because right. will, you will find a lot of products with these criteria. A lot of them. I don't want all the products. Here's the thing, where, 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 where would you do 50, 50 grand pounds a month in the UK? Just launched in America, no reviews, so nothing's happening. Yeah, but again, that depends on the market. I need to see the market. The market in America is 10 times what it is in the UK. Yeah, but you need reviews maybe in that market because it's too saturated. Yeah. So maybe you need 200 reviews to even start selling organically. I didn't see the numbers. Yeah. You might need that. And that's what you need an audience for and everything when you launch a product. Yeah. yeah, in the back there. So how are you relying on reviews? Are you hoping that they come organically? Um, we do aim for a lot of organic reviews. I'm actually going to cover a lot of that tomorrow in the masterclass. But um, those reviews will come. But I don't need a lot of reviews to start selling organically. You understand, right? I don't need a lot of them to start selling organically. You still don't agree. How many do you need? So it depends on the competitors. If my competitors doing 2K a month have 10 reviews and they're doing 2K, I need 10 reviews. If they have 60, I need 60. And hopefully my product is a bit better and not the same product, right? Hopefully I improve something. Yeah. You can't carry reviews from one country to another though. No. Yeah. Yeah. So with, let's say 1,000 reviews, right? Yeah. 2,000 reviews takes a lot of time. Yeah. You will know, depending on how uh, long people have been selling on Amazon, there are a few ways. The right ways and the wrong ways. Yeah, we do only the right ways. <laughs> so again, I can't really talk. I, I mean, what we do is we look heavily on the competitors with high review rates. And we just try to duplicate, not duplicate, to improve their processes. Email follow-ups, inserts, whatever is legal to do, we don't do anything black hat, okay? 
Anything that is legal to do, we do that. But I'm not worried about the thousand reviews when I launch. I just want to know the market is big enough that I can get there a year, two years from now. So let's say there's a thousand. Is your goal then to get your hundred as soon as possible? It depends on the competitors. It all depends on the competitors, how many reviews they have, the minimum that they need. That's what I'm going to do to start selling organically to know that it's a valid product and I'm going to order the second inventory in and everything. Yeah. What's that? Would you incentivize people in the right way to leave a review? What do you mean incentivize? I don't think you can incentivize in the right way to leave a review. <laughs> but I mean, I think the answer is in the question. But guys, okay, let's continue. So what did I forget in these criteria? Anyone? What? No, star rating is fine. Anything, yeah, Andrew. Uh, cost of goods sold or profit margin? No, that's not what I'm aiming for. Price. Return on investment? No. Price? No, I don't care about price. No? No, okay. No. <laughs> okay, good. Um, BSR. I didn't talk about BSR at all. Everyone talks about BSR, how important it is and everything, but I didn't mention it because it's not important, okay? I will prove it to you why it's not important, okay? I only care about the revenue, guys. Only care about the revenue, and that's it. So let's say, one sec, let's say we have a product selling for $20, okay? 30 units per day in sales. That's $600 a day. Profit is 30%, okay? That's $180 a day profit sold through FBA product, okay? On the other hand, we have a um, BSR 3000, doesn't matter. So product price, $60, 10 sales a day, same income, right? Let's say even the same profit. Sold through FBA, and this is the BSR. Can you please all agree that this is, doesn't matter which product I have? BSR is just a number of how many units you sold. How many orders you had, not how many units you sold. How many orders you had for the specific ASIN. So I don't really care about the BSR, and this is why I don't care about the price either. I don't care if it's a seven bucks item or a 70 bucks item, it doesn't matter. What matters is this right here. How much profit do I have at the end of the day? Okay? So the bottom line is that both products will be making the same profit. And if you're looking at BSR, you will never find more expensive products. Never. Okay, yeah. BSR is not what I look at, right? But what about the giveaways? What do you mean giveaways? Yes. So when you're aiming for $50,000, yeah. how many giveaways, because that costs a lot of money? Not necessarily. You're gonna, I'm going to talk about that. <laughs> okay. So far? Okay? Yeah, different? Good. Okay, so the big difference between my method and the other methods that you know to find products, and this is why I think it's a bit different and a, big, a bit more difficult to understand and everything. So I'm not looking for reasons to disqualify a product. Usually when you look in Jungle Scout or whatever you use or just in Amazon and you look at everything, you look for reasons to disqualify a product. Okay, why you shouldn't go after that product. I'm looking for those four sellers, hopefully more than four, that will give me enough reasons to go after this product. Okay? This is the big difference. Okay, so I'm going to do something that is not usually being done, but I'm going to show some product examples that I believe are actually good products. <laughs> okay? So these are not going to be yoga mats or anything like that or garlic presses or whatever. I'm just going to show some examples that I think are actually valid products to launch, but please don't launch them all at once, okay? <laughs> okay, I don't think you will actually launch any of those because this comes back to the brand and everything, but this is just an example, okay? So the first one is this product. Um, anyone knows what this is? Yeah. Drain Snake. Very cheap plastic product. Looks like this. These are the main images on Amazon. I don't know how Amazon approves those images, but these are the images, okay? Um, so this is, this is Jungle Scout, okay? And again, I don't like to look at the snapshot of what's happening right now. 
Flick. What is your name? Sorry. Here? Yeah. No, you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ramunas. Okay, so what Ramunas said is very true. I don't want to look at a snapshot of a time frame. I look at average 90 days. Always. Okay? But this is the best I can do in this presentation, so I just show you Jungle Scout. So I want to show you a few things here. First is the price. A very low price. Right? You might say there is not enough profit here. Hopefully I will fix that mindset um, soon. Next, I never um, arrange by rank, because again, BSR is not important. I always arrange everything only by revenue. Revenue is the only thing that matters, <laughs> okay? I don't care about BSR because again, it doesn't mean anything. Next, we have the reviews here. So you can see the second one has 1,600 reviews, but again, I don't really care, because if the market is deep enough for me to go into, I can deal with that as well. All of them are sold through FBA. Um, so you can see standard size. Um, you even have a small standard size, which I don't know if you know the difference, but it's a big difference for cheaper products. So if you have such a cheap product, you really want to be small standard and not large standard. It's going to save you maybe 70 or 80 cents per unit. Okay? Um, and you have the net here, which is very important for later when we calculate the COGS and everything that was mentioned before. I also added the number of days because no tool that I know shows you that, unfortunately, in those uh, different apps like this one or X-Ray or whatever. So you can see the number of days here. There is only one that is less than 100 days, okay, 78 days. So why is this a good product? So first you can see that these four sellers are doing over 2K a month, have less than 100 reviews, and are over 100 days on Amazon. So this means very quickly I can launch this product, get some reviews, um, and get some sales going. Okay? Next I have these in green. Um, and you can see the top two are over 10K. The third one is almost over 10K. Have less than 350 reviews. Um, so yeah, so in this example, I believe that this is a good product. Do you all understand why? Yeah. yeah? Okay. So production and shipping. So again, this is a very cheap product. Production is about 80 cents for a six pack of those drain snakes. Um, shipping by air, this is the price. Total per unit is $1.2. Above two ratio. So two ratio is what I look at when I look at new products. So as soon as we see a product that is a valid product, we move to suppliers. We move to seeing how much it's going to cost and everything, and we look for two ratio. What I mean by two ratio is also 200% ROI, and it has different names, but what we look at is if it's costing us $1.2, we want the net from Amazon to be 2.4 at least. That is before PPC and everything. Okay? And I bet you're all going to tell me that PPC is expensive, but it's not. Um, okay. So, uh, MOQ for this, let's say it's a thousand units. Uh, lead time is 20 days. So this is the net rate here from the top five that I mentioned. The three that are doing over 10K and two that are doing a few, anyway, doing over 2K and over 10K. So this is the net. So this is why you can see it's over to ratio because we have four here. We have the first one, which is 465, 438, 249, and 295, which is over 2.4, which is what I'm aiming for. Okay? The net, I remind you, this basically means the way to remember two ratio basically means that when I sell one unit, I can buy two. Okay? That, that's what it means. And this is just the price from Alibaba or whatever on the cost of the product. Um, okay. Another example. Okay? This is an example of a more expensive product. Um, another exciting product. Anyone knows what this is? Any guesses? What's that? Steven, you said something? No? What's that? <laughs> it is disgusting, you're right. What did you say? Yeah. So this is used to wash cloth diapers 
of babies and stuff. Hopefully just babies, okay? <laughs> Hopefully. Um, yeah. Okay, so this is reusable diapers and everything. So you can imagine the volume of this is not going to be crazy big, right? It's not going to be crazy big, but it's enough for us to go into. So this is how it looks like, Jungle Scout, okay? Quickly we'll go over this. So again, we have the price. This is a healthier price point. Um, you can see again, it's not by rank, it's by revenue. Reviews. Uh, we have the same Z guy, uh, sold directly by Amazon, 23 sellers. I don't care about this one, I'm just going to ignore that when I look at this product, okay? So again, we have a uh, large standard and then we have um, the number of days on Amazon for these products that I added in. So these two are doing over 2K, these two are, are doing over 10K in all of the criteria and everything. And these two in the middle is something that I like to find as well. And these two are in between, okay? When I see that and when I see the blue ones as well, this means the blue ones are new products selling on Amazon um, but are, it looks good, it looks like they, I know they just launched and everything, but after checking it looks like those sales are actually organic sales and when I see new sales coming into a market and it's not a lot of new sales coming into the market, it's actually a good sign, if you ask me. It means it's, it's probably a good idea to go into this market. And the two green ones just show me that the market is, I can still have maybe 100 reviews and sell like 4,000 a month, okay, with this specific product. Production and shipping quickly, so 10.5 per unit, $4 if you ship it by air, a lot cheaper by sea, obviously, 14.5. Again, it's above 2 ratio when you look at the numbers because 2 ratio is going to be 29, right? MOQ, so surprisingly, a lot of expensive products actually have very low MOQs. And um, to answer your question at the end, so you asked about 50K product, so obviously it's a bit different than this product. But when you have, okay, I'm going to talk about challenges of more expensive products anyway, but lead time is 20 days. Um, okay, so you understand this, right? Okay, good. Um, so I want to talk about a few of the challenges that more expensive products have and why it's not really a challenge, I guess. So, what? Sorry? No? Okay. So um, ordering 300 to 500 units will cost me a lot of money to invest, but actually... There is no reason to start with 300 units in this specific product. I can start with 150. The reason is because this is the page I showed you. And if you look here, this is what you can expect, number of sales you can expect to sell when you launch the product. So if I only sell 50 a month uh, when I launch, it's enough to start with 150. I don't need to start with more than that in these expensive products. Okay? Giveaways for free or $2 or whatever for these expensive products will cost me a lot of money. Well, a lot of times you can give expensive products for half price or discounted products or whatever and people will still go after them and you don't need a lot. You don't need to give a lot away in order to rank this product on the first page and everything. I will need at least 20 reviews before starting my PPC. This product, because it's so low competition, you can probably start when you just launch or when you have a few reviews, only review your program or whatever, you can just have a few reviews, start PPC and start getting sales organically and everything. The shipping is expensive, long lead time, as you saw, this is not really the case. And a lot of those expensive products are actually very low in the MOQs, and a lot of times we don't even put the logo on them or anything, we just do a nice packaging and ship it, and that's it. So some tools to use. So now that you understand my criteria and everything, I just want to tell you about a few of the tools that we use to do the research and everything. Um, so first there is Jungle Scout. You can also use X-Ray, which I believe is a bit better because also it's free, but I think it's a bit more accurate. Um, you, you should be using Keepa for a lot of different things. Uh, it's an extension for free. Um, Jungle Scout web app, Viral Launch, and Helium 10 all have tools to choose different criteria to search by. Do you all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah? So all of them have different tools, different prices. Um, I personally don't have a favorite. I think they all will show you the same product. I think they all work the same way. So I don't think it really matters which one you use. And this is only if you want to speed up the process. You can also do it manually if you want. 
Now, how do you use these tools with my categories and everything? So, cell is under 100k a month. The, these are the criteria that you choose when you search, okay? So first you choose the category. If you are already in a specific category, you choose the category. Then you filter them by less than 350 reviews, over 10k a month in sales, and sold only by FBA, okay? I'm looking only at FBA products in those 40 that I find. So you open the product from the results that you got. You look at Keepa to make sure it's over 100 days. If it's over 100 days, you just type the main keyword in the Amazon search under all departments. Run Jungle Scout or X-Ray, extract a few more pages. We always do that because we want to see the entire market. And we arrange everything by revenue. Okay, because again, maybe I think it's the main keyword, but maybe it isn't. And maybe the product is getting sales from a different, uh, different keyword. And it doesn't matter for my research. I just want to know that the sales are there, that they exist. Find at least two products that are over 10K a month, okay, the one that you found, plus another one, less than 350 reviews, sold by FBA, and then you find the first stage, okay, the first two products that I mentioned, over 2K, less than 100 reviews, sold by FBA. You want to open those four listings and make sure they are over 100 days on Amazon with a steady BSR looking at Kipa, you want to see a straight line in BSR, just to understand that they don't have like any giveaways right now or anything like that, or you're not having like, a lightning deal, and so on and so on. Um, yeah, so hopefully you will find more than four. Four is like the bare minimum that we look for, but hopefully you will find more. The baby monitor, for example, has a lot more than four in the stage two, stage three that I mentioned. And this is why we are excited to go after that product. It's going to be difficult, it's electronic, has a lot of problems and everything, but we really like those products. The market is very deep and we believe you can do 100k a month with that one product, okay? Um, okay, so these are some points that <laughs> took me a while to figure out, but these are things that I, again, think you should be focusing on. So a lot of sellers, if you don't have any, if you are sitting here with no products live, or even one product, I think that what I've seen changing in Amazon over the past few years, after selling it um, for a while now, is that this business is not part-time anymore. This is not a hobby, this is a real business. Um, and it's not just for beginners anymore. If you are a beginner and don't really understand Amazon, it's very hard to get lucky and make a lot of money. You really need to be a professional and understand Amazon on a deep level. So you can't look at this like a one product business. I'm gonna launch from one product and it's gonna make me a thousand bucks extra per month and that's it. It's not real estate, it doesn't work like that. So I think that the correct mindset to have is to launch at least three products. Now, obviously not at the same time, but if the first one fails, liquidate whatever you can to make, get as, money, as much money back as you can, launch another product and do the same. And I didn't see anyone yet failing with three products in a row when they start, like failing miserably. I haven't seen that anywhere. If anyone wants to volunteer, okay. <laughs> Build a brand, very important, I mentioned this before. I really believe in building a brand. I don't really care about building a brand, okay? It's not my favorite thing or anything, but I also, it's not only important, you can also obviously raise the price and everything, but I think this is what Amazon wants. I think Amazon wants to have brands on its platform and not just random products thrown out in a store or whatever, okay? What? It's also, <laughs> the reward is bigger when you build a brand. Biggest brand started selling on Amazon today, Apple. Apple, what's that, sorry? They've got their own shop on Amazon now, Apple. This is oh, okay, so Apple have their own shop on Amazon? Yeah. It'll look better than any of ours. We'll deal. <laughs> that's fine, Apple products will look better than all of us probably anyway, but that's fine. <laughs> um, avoid seasonal products, again, this is for less than 100K a month. You really want to avoid seasonal products. And a lot of times I see people don't really think it's a seasonal product, but it actually is. Um, people launching stuff like hammocks and tents and whatever, or swimming equipment or I don't know what, but a lot of those are just seasonal products and you don't even think about it when you launch them. Um, there is not one correct way to find a product, okay? This is just my method 
and my criteria they just came out of nowhere pretty much but this is just to see that I can launch the product quickly with a very low number of reviews and scale it up to at least 10k a month or 50k a month or whatever and launch products I see so many people doing 10 20 50k a month going to Shopify or focusing on I don't know building an Instagram following or whatever it is but really, I think your biggest ROI, the biggest thing you can do for your business is just to launch more products for your brand. I think this is, should be all of your focus, okay? So if you have 10 products, 10K a month each, okay, and let's say a few of them fail, and that's what happens. If you, I mean, in my business, I can honestly say that one out of four or five doesn't take off. And we have to liquidate Sometimes it's in the first shipment, sometimes it's the second shipment. And I think it's with every seller. Every seller that I know, this happens. And you can't know everything. It's a risk, obviously, that you take when you launch your products. And I think this is true for any, um, any business that sells products. I think it's very hard to know what's actually going to work out and everything. And we still fail with products sometimes. So even if you do all of this, this will take you to a million dollar business a year with just eight, nine products that you sell for 10K a month each. And really what usually happens is that you, if you work with this method, and I taught this a few times already, also in Israel and in China Magic, um, usually for smaller groups and everything, but what I can say is, after I saw a few people using it, when they go after the 10K model, a lot of times they find like a winner product, doing all of a sudden 30 or 40K, and they can reach that 1 million much sooner than you think, much sooner than having 10 products or whatever. Um, so that they're doing over 100 k months, okay? I know there are a lot of you here. So please remember that it takes the same effort from you to invest $3,000 or $30,000 in a new product. You still need to create the listing, the copy, the images, everything. Everything is the same. Nothing changes, okay? Nothing changes. <laughs> it's going to take the same effort until you launch the product. You do want to invest in social media, a social platform that your customers hang out in. If you sell for elderly people or whatever, you don't really want to use Instagram probably, okay? <laughs> uh, launchy products to gain an audience and easy cash flow. So the only difference between a cheap product and an expensive product that sell the same profit per day is that the cheaper product sells a lot more units, okay? And the cash flow is better and everything is nicer and everything. So you want to have a line of a few cheap products that really uh, is on your cash flow and everything, and that will help you build a brand quickly. If you have an insert, if you gather an audience, and so on and so on, you can really build up an audience on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, or email, email list or whatever you want. And you also want to have more expensive products. Expensive, I mean, let's say over $40, $50 at least. Because when you have the audience, you can upsell your customers on those more expensive products. And again, it won't take that much more effort than launching a cheaper product or anything. We go after very tough products. Now, Baby Monitor is one example. But if a product needs FDA approval, and it needs this approval, and whatever approval, we really want those products because not a lot of people will do that and go after these products. This is not recommended for beginners in any way, but for more advanced those that you've been in the trenches for a while and everything, I highly recommend going after more difficult, bigger fish products. This is probably the most important point. So when you take an Amazon course, or whatever it is, or you, you start this like me as a hobby because you wanted an extra 200 bucks a month, um, I didn't, didn't think about building a team or having processes or systems or anything. And if you are over 100k a month, and you just all you know is how to launch products on Amazon, if you're just going to go after the other product, the next product, and the next product, and the next product, you're going to fail. The business is going to fail because you don't have systems. You're just going to work harder and harder as you go. So you really want to have a team, processes, and systems, and have everything automated um, as fast as possible, basically, because then you can scale it to any level that you want. Okay, I have a team of seven people right now. And you have to stay focused. This is probably the biggest thing, at least for me, is to really stay focused, um, and I love speaking, and I love being here and everything, but I'm really trying to focus on my Amazon business 
and do nothing but Amazon, and that's it. Thank you. Everyone. Uh, we have time for questions or? Okay. Yeah. Hi. Um, I sell. I don't really sell on Amazon yet. Um, I do sell quite a lot outside of Amazon okay. through other. Um, what do you sell? Uh, voucher group on daily deal sites a lot of the time. Okay. I have a massive email database. Um, my my main thing is about your team. We have quite a big team. Who are the most important people in your team? Because we really have nobody that knows anything about Amazon. So. <laughs> So I'm here. Help. Um, I, I think, okay, so th this is what happens when there is room for questions a lot of times at the end of these um, sessions and lectures and everything. It's a very specific question to you right now. So I will answer you later, I promise. And if I don't, message me on Facebook. I will answer you. Okay, no problem. This is my, I had my email there. You can just email me, message me, whatever, okay? And I'll answer you because this is a very specific question. It's a longer answer. Okay, so if you have questions, please try to keep it relevant to the room and not for your specific case. Okay? Yeah. Uh, a quick question. You said you you look only for the people fulfilled by Amazon. Or when you see somebody who made you the first uh, first few products fulfilled by Mention, it's not a good thing for you because you can always feed that they have a handicap. Yeah. So let's say, good question. So let's say we have a few products that are by Merchant. I don't care as long as there are those FBA products there as well. So as long as, because Merchant is a different business model completely. I don't know how much their fees are. I don't know anything. I don't know enough about that model to know if an FBA product is going to be good or not good. So I don't trust it on luck. I want to see those at least four sales that I'm looking for that are FBA. And I don't care about AMZ or Merchant or anything on any page, as long as those are there. So you don't okay? care about Amazon sales at all, no? I don't care because, okay, so... Let's say, let's say there is a Starbucks, okay, downstairs or whatever, and you see like five more coffee shops that you don't know, you don't know who they are, but just random coffee shops doing really well. You see like long lines and everything. You should open another coffee shop, right, because they're all killing it. So who cares that Starbucks is there? Doesn't, people go to Starbucks because it's a brand that they know and everything, but if the market is big enough, you can still go in there and launch your coffee shop, right? So that's the same concept here. So that would be for private label though, not the, the retail advertising? Yeah, it doesn't matter because that market, it doesn't matter if you put the Starbucks, if you put the AMZ there or you take it out. It's the same thing, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you had a question, right? Yeah. It was more a question for those that haven't be begun yet. Um, yeah. How did you start your Amazon journey and what advice would you give to those that are looking to start? Is it courses? I think honestly when I started, so good question, how do you start now Amazon? Um, when I started, Amazon looked a lot differently than it does now. That's the honest truth, okay? It's a lot more difficult to start today than it was three and a half years ago, but the opportunity is still huge because we all know everything is moving to e-commerce. Everything is moving to e-commerce and it's still very, very small percentage out of everything. So what I would suggest, I don't know about any course or anything that I would recommend, um, the only person I do trust in this room is Dan. I don't know where Dan is. He's outside. <laughs> outside, perfect. So I don't trust Dan anymore. <laughs> but um, yeah, you should probably talk to Dan. Dan's in this lecture a few times. But then um, they have a team and everything, so I trust what they are doing and everything, so you should talk to him. Um, but yeah, it's kind of hard for me because I, I don't do anything like coaching or anything like that. So. I don't know anything about beginners right now, to be honest. So what did you do? Did you just look at I took, a, I took the ASM course, Amazing Selling Machine. That's the course I took. Uh, but it was three and a half years ago. The game changed a lot since. I was, can I just say something? I seen him uh, about two years ago, was it? On stage at an ASM event. And he even blew the minds of the people that were running the event. And that was the only reason why I came here today, was to see him, because he just... He just <laughs> he, he dropped the lightning deals, by the lightning deals, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, by the lightning deals, and everyone's mind just went, bah, 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 bah. and that's the only reason why I came to see him today. Thanks, Tom. Thanks. Yeah, I paid him, but yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Okay, any other, yeah. What are your thoughts on uh, product cost customization? In your example, you went straight on to Alibaba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So that was just an example. So good question. What do I think about customization and improving the product and everything? We do all of that. We try to do all of that. And if we can't find an edge, we usually don't go after the product. We always try to improve in some way. Because if it's just going to be the same thing, it's just going to be a race to the bottom, and we don't want that. We always try to improve. Sometimes it's as simple as making an explanation video on how to install a product. And sometimes it's actually changing something. It's all in the reviews, in the Q&A of the products on the listing. It's all the answers that you need are there on what you need to improve and everything. We go to China, I go to China a lot, like every six months and everything. So we do everything we can to actually improve the products and everything. But again, if you go after the low-hanging low fruit, you don't need to improve a lot. When you go after the tougher products, you will want to have an edge. You will want to have, and if you can show that in your main image very clearly or whatever, that's what we really like. We don't just think, yeah, we're going to add this. Is, this is going to have more power, or this is going to look better. Or this is gonna... We really want it to be shown on the listing as much as we can, OK? Yeah. So your selection criteria, based on what you just said, um, you may want to tweak it to look for products that have slightly lower reviews. Like maybe we always like seeing lower review star rating. If everyone has five, it's a lot of times, uh, you know, probably a red uh, dot over there that we're not going to go for it. But a lot of times, I mean, those products will be out of our criteria anyway. When they all have five stars, it's usually like done. It's usually saturated already. Over there. Okay. Could we try and do it from the mic so we can get it on the camera? Is that okay with everyone? Okay. Just wait for the mic. Uh, Richard, if you pick the next question, you can give them right there. Yeah, so the BPC campaign that usually, I, I'm assuming that the $50,000 example, the stage three example that you've sent, uh, you will not be on the first page. And you yeah. are looking for organic sales. Yeah. So what's the budget for PPC? Okay, so good question. So how do I get PPC to rank? Well, this is louder now, okay. I don't know how, okay. PPC, how do I get ranked with a new product that I want to do 50K with, right? So a baby monitor, right? That's a good example. If I'm going to try and rank the keyword baby monitor, I'm going to fail when I launch the product. Because I don't have any reviews. Maybe I have five or 10 or whatever. I'm on page 10, OK, for the word baby monitor. And I'm just going to push $10 bids or whatever on that keyword. I'm going to fail because I'm not going to convert. I don't have the reviews. So I'm going to go after much longer tail keywords when I launch. I don't have any other choice. As soon as I keep building myself conversions and ranking organically on pages and everything, then I can go after the more competitive keywords. But we really start low because even the longer tail, five, six words, still have so much traffic and people are not targeting them like exact match heavily or whatever. So we're just going after them heavily when we launch. And again, we know we don't need a lot of reviews. We can stay on page 10 for baby monitor. It's fine. It's a very deep market. And to get to 10K with a baby monitor, I believe it's very simple. The difference is with PPC, you really need to know your stuff when you go after bigger fish. You can't guess with PPC when you go after bigger fish because you're going to fail. You really need to know what you're doing. So do you have a budget for the PPC for that? I think the budget is $1 million because it doesn't matter. As long as it's profitable or break even, that's good enough for us when we launch. The budget is irrelevant. Okay? Yeah. Next one here, okay. Alison. Another little question, more relevant. I'll yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, really quick one for you. Obviously, getting reviews is really important to yeah. develop. What would be your biggest tip to, to encourage, shall we say, reviews? Biggest tip to encourage uh, to get reviews? Um, we really try to over deliver with whatever we're doing if they get a small surprise in their packaging if it's whatever a nice insert if it's something i didn't really expect this expected less and you give them more a lot of times they are much more likely to give you a review but the biggest thing and i'm gonna i'm getting tomorrow i'm gonna do a master class and everything but i'm gonna talk a lot about that as well like reviews when you i'm gonna talk about launching extensively and everything but reviews you just need to understand how to get them organically. And all you need to do is study your competitors that are getting them organically and just do a better job than them because that's how you win. Okay? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a, a, about to put in the first order and launch my first pro probably in January. Yeah, cancel. Okay, no. Okay, good. Yeah. And uh, 
You mentioned in your presentation that you need three to five reviews to launch a PPC. Uh, it really depends. <laughs> it's chicken and egg, isn't it? How are you going to get those reviews if you're buried on page 20? It's going to take you forever to get three to five reviews. So you need to go on PPC, it seems to me, immediately with no reviews. That, again, depends on the competition. If you have competitors with zero reviews making some organic sales, then you don't need reviews when you launch. If all of them has at least three reviews, you need three reviews when you launch. That's just how it works. Okay, you can only base it on competitors. You can't guess zero is okay, or five is okay, or 100 is okay. It all depends on the market. Also the price, you don't decide the price, the market decides the price. Okay, so it all depends on the market. Everything depends on the market. What's that? Can I ask for more question? I don't know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, if you pay your money for the PPC and you put your bids in, you pay the price, uh, do you get to page one automatically or might be on still page two or three? Because I read a yeah. post from someone who said she paid the money. Yeah, so let me tell you what I know about PPC, okay? This is what I know when you, okay, so let's say you have zero reviews and you put $10 on a bid, okay? Amazon is going to put you on page one, position one, okay? Let's say that's the scenario. Now, let's say 10 people click on your ad, no one buys the product. You have zero conversion rate, right? Amazon is gonna move your ad from page one to page six or whatever. On page one, they're gonna show someone putting $9 bid. He puts less than you, but he converts better than you. Okay, maybe he converts one sale in every 10 clicks or whatever. If he doesn't, they push him back. So it's not only the amount that you put on the bid, it depends heavily on the conversion rate and the sessions and everything that your product is getting. That is why for very competitive products, we don't go after the biggest keywords. Because we know it, it won't rank. We can't rank those keywords when, as soon as we launch. We go after lower keywords and then we build it up from there. Okay? Okay, guys, I'm going to take one more question because it's 9 o'clock now and we are yeah. running over. Yeah, so he... Okay, yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah, this is the most important question, so please pay attention. Okay. I actually have two. <laughs> Choose one. Um, they're both important. <laughs> okay, so I, I asked both, you ask whichever you want. <laughs> so you talked about how to pick a product with already similar products on the market. What about the unique products that you might want to make yourself develop? Uh, pros and cons. Your opinion. Okay. And uh, you talked about building a brand. Uh, when do you decide to register for the brand? Before you launch the product? After? How many? You know, what are the criteria? Okay, so first, registering a brand, that's a new thing that came out, I don't know how many months ago. But when I started, it wasn't an issue. I didn't have to brand register. I don't know what my suggestion will be to new sellers to do that. I think that if you uh, build a generic brand, a brand name, a generic one, you can just sign it up as soon as possible because it doesn't matter if you change the product and the brand tomorrow. So I think if I would start again, I would choose a generic brand name that can fit anything pretty much. Um, but some people might not agree. That's fine. Um, uh, no, and the second question was about unique products. So I don't know what the product is that you have in mind, like a unique product that I want to launch. Maybe I have a dream about Kickstarter campaign or whatever it is, okay? A very unique product. What you need to remember is, is that Amazon is a keyword search platform. If that product is searched for, if the keywords are there, if it's a very uh, unique power bank, for example, maybe I will go for it. You know, maybe I have an idea for a power bank, I will sit down with a supplier and everything. What I would say is that I wouldn't recommend anyone doing less than 100k a month to go after those products. It will take too much time and you don't know your numbers, you don't know anything yet about Amazon. Going after unique products when you just start out, it's not a good idea. Learn the system, look everything is like a big test, and like a school that you spend money on, and you learn and everything, because that's what you want to do when you start, okay? Ladies and gents, I think we are going to say a massive <laughs> thank you. So, you've sourced great products, but promoting your brand and cost-effectively boosting your online conversion rates is now more important than ever. This requires the right images to show your products at their best and help convert browsers into buyers. Finding a reliable photographer 
who delivers hassle-free, outstanding product images within your budget can be difficult. Meet Pack Shots Direct, the UK photography studio that delivers premium pack shots for a fixed price. Carefully pack your products and ship them to our studio. When they arrive, we'll let you know and we'll also clarify any details about the shoot before collecting payment. Each photo is edited and inspected to ensure they meet the current Amazon image guidelines. Receiving your images couldn't be easier. We email you a link so you can download the images in three formats straight to your computer. Our state-of-the-art equipment helps us deliver premium quality, high-resolution images on time, every time. We also offer a range of other services to help promote your brand. From interactive 360 degree spins to videos and even lifestyle images. Why not visit us at www.packshotsdirect.com